I built this building, people have told me you never have a big enough garage. Well, I didn't really believe that, so I built this garage to handle 120 vehicles. Today I have 147 in this garage, and it needs to be expanded. Though the collection in Dennis Albaugh's garage is hardly crowded, a quick look around confirms what he says. If he plans to add any more cars, to paraphrase a line from the movie Jaws, he's going to need a bigger barn. This almost unbelievable gathering of pristine automobiles acquired by Dennis Albaugh in the last few years offers an astounding array of colors, styles, power plants, and year models. In sheer numbers alone, the collection is almost overwhelming. And there's one more quality most all the cars share. They're Chevrolet convertibles. You've no doubt heard it said about classic cars that if the top goes down, the price goes up. An obvious reference to convertibles. Well, when you consider the number of convertibles in the Allball collection, it becomes clear that it's not only a valuable collection, but one that would allow Dennis to drive a different rag top a day for at least a couple of months of sunny afternoon. gets three or four out for the weekend uh, ready to go for me and then I drive them around town and then uh, we try to do that on a, a regular basis. We, we try to run them twice every year and we have a log that we log them into the computer on and the biggest problem that we have if we don't drive them twice a year is the brake cylinders uh, will get uh, um, rusted or whatever and they need to be exercised as well as the motor started up and stuff. The rare concessions made to having this outstanding collection of Chevrolet convertibles have been made only recently. The addition of a white Ron Fellows limited edition Z06 vet and a black 2009 ZR1 Corvette are the only exceptions to the all convertible collection because he wanted them and they're only available as coupes. My dad, when I was a kid, never let me have a Corvette. He said they're dangerous, they're made out of fiberglass, and the, no, I'm, uh, you're not gonna have one of them, and he refused to let me have one. And then later on in the years, I actually, I was looking for a 58, 59, or 60, because I really liked that series. I finally found a really nice 60 fuel eight, and I started with that one, and then I just started going a few years each way, and then I just kept growing, and um, the, the hardest one of the Corvettes to find was the 53, to find one and then a lots of times from the factory they weren't right and then to find one and get them really right. All these Corvettes are kind of unique. They all have a little bit of history to them. They're either the big blocks or one uh, specific paint color or I tried to not find the run of the mill cars. It doesn't require an automotive expert to confirm for sure that these are no run of the mill cars. The collection starts with a model produced 41 years before the first Corvette ever saw the light of day. It's a 1912 model Little convertible, named after Lewis Chevrolet's founding partner, William Little. After 1912, the brand became Chevrolet, and one of each year can be found in the Allball collection, except the 1939 Chevrolet convertible. They're a real tough car to find but there wasn't any 39 Chevrolets built in the United States, and we finally found one in Australia. It's on the ship right now coming over, and when it gets here, we have to take it to the ground and build it back up. We know it needs refurbished. It is a convertible. I think this will be the only the second 39 Chevrolet convertible in the United States. The entire collection is a living history of Chevrolet convertibles through several decades. Some of the most iconic classics, such as the 57 Bel Air convertible, enjoy multiple representations, along with a row of Chevelle and Camaro muscle cars. But Corvette enthusiasts will immediately gravitate to one wing of the Allball collection as a double line of C1s, C2s, and C3s face off in a rainbow of Corvettes, representing the first 30 years or so of production. 
Counting the non-convertible Z06 and the ZR1, the Corvette's total is pushing toward an inevitable three dozen, all in the condition that gawkers first saw them when they filled showroom floors, and mostly in the condition they were when Dennis Albaugh sought them out, using his own criteria. Convertible is a must. And then we always tried to make sure we got a big block. We tried to find something like a three-speed, something uh, unique to that year. Uh, fuel injection was very important to me. I tried to get a lot of these cars were fuel injected. To state the obvious, one doesn't acquire a collection like this, flipping burgers at the local hangout. Dennis Albaugh heads up an international conglomerate he built from scratch. I was raised on a farm just a mile east of here. And I was a farm kid. I started out in the agricultural chemicals, and I went to work for a cooperative north of town here a little bit. And I sold chemicals to farmers and um, in that area. And then I left there, and I got in the agricultural chemical business. That business primarily produces a widely used agricultural chemical called glyphosate, marketed under numerous trade names, but most commonly in the weed killer Roundup. We have employees in 21 countries about 3,700 employees now, and we sell uh, our chemicals in about 80 countries right now. If Dennis Albaugh's company is international, his universe is local. An on-site golf course worthy of country club status has a membership of one, Dennis Albaugh. The golf course is one that I started out and just was gonna be three holes behind my house. And then it grew a little bit, and I picked up another property, another property, another property, and today we have, it's kind of unique, we have a 19th hole. We use the, uh, the golf course for a lot of different events, but no, I don't have any trouble getting a tee time. <laughs> the course adjoins an upscale housing development, which includes his and his wife's spectacular Tuscan-style custom home. It overlooks the golf course and its amenities, and is a mere three-minute cart ride from his office building and his world-class car collection. And if you have the ability to put together a collection like this, what's the most fun about it? It's probably coming over here at night and turning the lights on and walking around and enjoying each one of the cars. He's about the only one who gets to do that. The collection is not open to the public. But for the past couple of years, he's opened it and the grounds on one summer day for a classic car show and tour. The money raised from the events has provided tens of thousands of dollars to the local high school athletic department. And we couldn't help but wonder about putting the collection together. Which was the most enjoyable, the acquisition or the hunt? I think the hunt is probably uh, as much fun or more. <laughs> Uh, more than uh, the acquisition itself. Well, to that, we can only add Dennis, happy hunting. Special thanks to Dennis Albaugh and his staff for allowing us an up-close and personal glimpse of an amazing collection of Corvettes and GM convertibles. Stay with us now. Vet Collections continue in just a moment.